Catholic beliefs about Holy Mary. If ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ as St Jerome famously stated then ignorance of scripture is also ignorance of Mary. This is because what the Catholic faith believes about Mary is based on what it believes about Christ and what it teaches about Mary illuminates in turn its faith in Christ. In other words, we can fully understand Christ without understanding Mary. இயேசு பிறப்பின் முன்னறிவிப்பு புனித லூக்கா எழுதிய சுவிசேஷம் முதலாம் அதிகாரம் வசனங்கள் இருபத்தி ஆறு முதல் முப்பத்தி எட்டு வரை ஆறாம் மாதத்தில் கபிரியல் என்னும் வானத்தூதரை கடவுள் கலிலேயா உள்ள நாசரேத் என்னும் ஊரில் இருந்த ஒரு கன்னியிடம் அனுப்பினார் அவர் தாவிது குடும்பத்தினராகிய யோசேப்பு என்னும் பெயருடைய ஒருவருக்கு மன ஒப்பந்தமானவர் அவர் பெயர் மரியா வானத்தூதர் மரியாவுக்கு தோன்றி அருள்மிக பெற்றவரே வாழ்க ஆண்டவர் உம்மோடு இருக்கிறார் என்றார் இவ்வார்த்தைகளை கேட்டு அவர் கலங்கி இந்த வாழ்த்து எத்தகையதோ என்று எண்ணிக்கொண்டிருந்தார் வானத்தூதர் அவரை பார்த்து மரியா அஞ்ச வேண்டாம் கடவுளின் அருளை கண்டடைந்துள்ளீர் இதோ கருவுற்று ஒரு மகனை பெறுவீர் அவருக்கு ஏசு என்னும் பெயரிடுவீர் அவர் பெரியவராயிருப்பார் உன்னத கடவுளின் மகன் எனப்படுவார் அவருடைய தந்தை தாவீதின் அரியணையை ஆண்டவராகிய கடவுள் அவருக்கு அளிப்பார் அவர் யாக்கோப்பின் குடும்பத்தின் மீது என்றென்றும் ஆட்சி செலுத்துவார் அவருடைய ஆட்சிக்கு முடிவே இராது என்றார் அதற்கு மரியா வானத்தூதரிடம் இது எப்படி நிகழும் நான் கன்னியாயிற்றே என்றார் வானத்தூதர் அவரிடம் தூய ஆவி உம் மீது வரும் உன்னத கடவுளின் வல்லமை உம்மேல் நிழலிடும் ஆதலால் உம்மிடம் பிறக்கப் போகும் குழந்தை தூயது அக்குழந்தை இறைமகன் எனப்படும் உம் உறவினராகிய எலிசபெத்தும் தம் முதிர்ந்த வயதில் ஒரு மகனை கருத்தறித்திருக்கிறார் கரு உற இயலாதவர் என்று சொல்லப்பட்ட அவருக்கு இது ஆறாம் மாதம் ஏனெனில் கடவுளால் இயலாதது ஒன்றுமில்லை என்றார் பின்னர் மரியா நான் ஆண்டவரின் அடிமை உம் சொற்படியே எனக்கு நிகழட்டும் என்றார் அப்பொழுது வானத்தூதர் அவரை விட்டு அகன்றார் இது ஆண்டவரின் அருள்வாக்கு தேர் ஆர் செவரல் ரெஃபரன்சஸ் ஆஃப் த வேர்ல்ட் ஹேண்ட்மேட் இன் போத் இன் தி ஓல்ட் டெஸ்ட்மெண்ட் அண்ட் இன் தி நியூ டெஸ்ட்மெண்ட் One example of a handmaid in the Old Testament is Sarah. Some of those biblical references are shown here for us to read and understand the linkage of the word handmaid throughout history. Doctrine of the Catholic Church. Catechism of the Catholic Church. 484 to 486 The annunciation to Mary inaugurates the fullness of time the time of the fulfillment of God's promises and preparations Mary was invited to conceive him in the whole fullness of deity who dwell bodily The divine response to her question how can this be since i know not man was given by the power of the spirit the holy spirit will come upon you the mission of the holy spirit is always conjoined and ordered to that of the son the holy spirit the lord the giver of life is sent to sanctify the womb of the virgin mary and divinely fecundate it causing her to conceive the eternal son of the father 
in a humanity drawn from her own the father's only son conceived as man in the womb of the virgin mary is christ that is to say anointed by the holy spirit from the beginning of his human existence though the manifestation of this fact takes place only progressively to the shepherds to the magi to john the baptist to his disciples thus the whole life of jesus christ will make manifest how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and with power throughout the old covenant the mission of many holy women prepared for that of mary at the very beginning there was eve despite her disobedience she receives the promise of a prosperity that will be victorious over the evil one as well as the promise that she will be the mother of all the living by virtue of this promise sara conceives a son in spite of her old age against all human expectation god chooses those who were considered powerless and weak to show forth his faithfulness to his promises hannah the mother of samuel deborah ruth judith and esther and many other women mary stands out among the poor and humble of the lord who confidently hope for and receive salvation from him after a long period of waiting the times are fulfilled in her the exalted daughter of zion and the new plan of salvation is established when we read in luke's account of the annunciation that mary calls herself the handmaid of the lord we find ourselves sorting through the many historical and biblical associations that have shaped the meaning of the word Biblical figures from the Old Testament like Sarah and Rachel had servants called handmaids who cared for their needs and were also offered to their husbands as surrogate mothers. Handmaids were the lowliest of household servants, trained to respond to the slightest movement of their mistress's hands and to be at hand ready to serve at a moment's notice. Luke uses the word to describe Mary to emphasize her humility and alertness to God's prompts. Mary's response to the angel's message begins with the word behold, the equivalent of the phrase used by the prophets when called here I am. Her assent is open-ended and absolute. The angel's answer explains everything to Mary and she surrenders to the will of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled according to thy word. Mary uses the title of servant, the servant of the Lord. This title from Isaiah represents the mission of men, which is not a privilege, but a service to men. To get a deeper understanding of what her fiat, her yes entailed, and what happens when we say yes to God, we need to look at the word handmaid. What did she mean by that? According to the dictionary, a handmaid is someone whose essential function is to assist. Assist, not take charge of, not become the savior of, not be such a good priest or a lay minister or religious brother or sister that people admire you and give you the credit for a job well done. An assistant is often called the employer's right hand or more literally an extension of the employer's hand. None of this is being a handmaid of the Lord. None of this is being an extension of God's hand. It's me being me, stretching out my own hand to see how far I can make it reach. Let's consider how Mary modeled the assistant's job. Mary was handmaid 
listens closely to what the master wants. Mary had said, let it be done to me according to your word. She was a good listener. Through faith, Mary continued to hear and to ponder that word, in which there became ever clearer, in a way which surpasses knowledge, the self-revelation of the living God. Thus, in a sense, Mary as a mother became the first disciple of her son. Since a handmaid of the Lord is a disciple of Christ, a handmaid is also a true follower. It's not hard to figure out what God wants of us because Jesus is leading us to do the same things that he did. In Redemptorist Matter, paragraph 41, we read, She who at the Annunciation called herself the handmaid of the Lord, that she was true disciple of Christ, who strongly emphasized that his mission was one of service. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. What we incur from this example? Mary's response. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. To the divine message is a model of faith for every believer. Mary believed in God's promises, even when they seemed impossible. She was full of grace because she trusted that what God said was true and that it would be fulfilled. She was willing to accept God's will, even though it seemed impossible. At a time when a humble servant leadership is sorely lacking in our power, and status hungry culture, Mary's example, which even Jesus followed, is one of the gifts to us.